Matthew Heimbach of the Traditionalist Workers' Party speaks to participants at a white nationalists rally on October 28, 2017 in Shelbyville. 10. The event billed as a White Lives Matter rally is hosted by Nationalist Front, which is a coalition of several white supremacist organizations. Hours after a White Lives Matter rally unfolded Saturday in Shelbyville. 10. Resulting in lots of counter-protesters. But no violence a fight broke out between a smaller group of white supremacists and an interracial couple at a restaurant in Brentwood, about 50 miles to the north. The couple, a 30-year-old white woman and a 37-year-old black man, were dining inside the corner pub when a group of about 20 to 30 white men and women came in and sat at a table behind them. According to a statement by the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department, the 30-year-old woman later told police that one of the group members asked her to guess and that she responded white lives matter. Police said, another said that's right and told her to join their table and leave her boyfriend. Police said in a statement, the argument inside apparently escalated even after the female victim had gone outside to de-escalate the situation. Subscribe to the Postmost newsletter. Today's most popular stories on the Washington Post police said another woman from the self-identified White Lives Matter group began to argue with the 30-year-old woman, and that a man reportedly then punched her in the face causing a cut above her eye. She did not seek medical treatment. Police said, the fight was captured on video by Annalise Worm, a Tennessee resident who said she had driven to Brentwood to escape the rally chaos farther south. While at the corner pub, Worm said she recognized a group of white supremacists walk into the restaurant. These guys, maybe 20 of them, dressed in all black, paraded through to an adjoining room and immediately started harassing a biracial, interracial, couple there. Worm wrote in Facebook posts that has since been widely shared. It broke out into a huge fight with them busting open the face of the white girl who was furious with them for harassing them. I honestly can't believe this is happening. My heart hurts. Worm posted a picture of the group of men filing into the restaurant along with video of the altercation after it had apparently spilled out onto the street. Footage showed a tight cluster of people shoving one another and appearing to shout. At one point, a woman is pushed back against a window of the pub and blood is visible on her face. Oh, my God, there she's bleeding. A man inside the restaurant says in the video, Worm did not immediately respond to requests for comment Sunday afternoon. By the time officers arrived at the restaurant, all of the parties involved in the altercation were gone. However, the 30-year-old woman later returned to the corner pub to file a report. Police said, an investigation into the assault is ongoing. Police said they are looking for the man who punched the woman and described him as a white male in his 30s wearing a black jacket and black jeans. The female victim told police that people in the group left the scene in multiple cars, including a white van with a Wisconsin license plate and a sedan with a New York license plate. Jerry Grimm, the manager of Corner Pub, told the Washington Post the restaurant was about half full when the fight broke out. Unfortunately, we don't know much other than some people were eating and that turned into an argument. Grimm said, Everything was fine and then all of a sudden people started talking and everyone was yelling. He said an incident like that is extremely unusual for the pub. This is a family sports bar. We've got kids, babies in here. We all cheer for our teams. He said, it's a nice place to come. In a phone interview late Saturday with Mike reporter Jack Smith IV. White nationalist leader Matthew Heimbach disputed claims their group had started the fight at the pub, instead blaming the black man who was part of the interracial couple. Heimbach claimed their group tried to de-escalate the situation and that the woman who was bloody jumped in and took swings at people. Heimbach told Smith their group did not report anything to police. 
Just got off the phone with white nationalist leader Matthew Heimbach. Here's a rough transcript of our quick chat about the fight in TN. Pick. Twitter. Com. WGOW7HNN8U Jack Smith IV. At Jack Smith IV. October 29, 2017 Fears of violence had plagued officials and residents of Shelbyville and Murfreesboro. 10. Leading up to the White Lives Matter rallies. A second rally planned for Murfreesboro was cancelled Saturday. Most wanted to avoid the same disastrous outcome in Charlottesville. When a Unite the Right rally on August 12 turned deadly after a car plowed into a crowd of counter-protesters killing one woman and injuring at least 19 other people. As the Post's Wesley Lowry reported from Shelbyville, about twice as many counter-protesters as White Lives Matter participants showed up Saturday, ultimately overwhelming them. Throughout the morning, the counter-protest oscillated between mocking the rally and drowning it out with music. At various points, they played the Ghostbusters song, Michael Jackson's Black or White in the theme song to Jeopardy. When the rally's speakers tried to address the crowd they were drowned out by Black Lives Matter. Chants. In between speakers, organizers tease the white supremacists. Yo, Nazis. A counter-protester with a megaphone shouted. How does it feel knowing your daughters are probably all at home listening to rap music and hanging out with their black boyfriends right now? It was an effective show of force. Counter-protester Cubby Barry, 39, told Lowry, It was important to show up and show people that we don't stand for their message. Read more. White Lives Matter organizers cancel second rally after taunts from counter-protesters own dead as car strikes crowds amid protests of white nationalists gathering in Charlottesville. Two police die in helicopter crash the white flight of Derek Black.